Hello and uh, welcome to this new tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be learning about Zoho Books. Zoho is a unique and powerful software suit that is supposed to transform the way you work and it is designed for businesses of all sizes and it has Zoho CRM, Zoho Mail, Zoho Books, Zoho Desk and uh, Zoho Creator plus more you can explore more products on Zoho. But in this tutorial, we are going to be focusing on Zoho Books. Now, Zoho Books is a perfect online accounting software that helps you to manage your cash flow, invoicing, banking, inventory, report generation, uh, your VAT compliance, and everything else that concerns accounting. To use Zoho Books, you simply come to zoho.com forward slash books and then you will try a premium for 14 days at zero cost you will input your company's name the email address the password your country and then you agree to the terms and then you click on create once you do that it now takes you to zoho books homepage with zoho books you'll be able to see your total receivables total payables you'll be able to see the breakdown of your cash flow also then you'll be able to see your income and expenses you will also be able to see your projects and you will also be able to build those projects you'll be able also to add your debit or bank details or credit cards and then you can also download Zoho Books app for Android and iOS to manage your finances from anywhere using your mobile device. Now, how do we use the Zoho Books? Let's start with the items. Under this part for items, on the left hand side, you can add a new item. You can either click on this plus or on the upper right corner, you can click on new. So if I click on new, I'll be able to add new item. Then I can give the name of the item. And I'm also able to choose, is it a good or is it a service? In this case, let me choose a service. And then which service am I giving? Then I can just write, maybe, let me call it service 77. Then I can select the unit or type. So is it... So is it a box, dozen, grams, and so on? So in this case, I'm offering a service, so I don't have to select the unit. Then down here, I can select the sales information, that is the selling price. This is the currency that I have chosen, Kenyan shillings, but I'll be showing you how you can also change this. So the Kenyan shillings for the service 77 that I'm offering, I'll charge that at 1,000 Kenyan shillings, that is the selling price. And uh, the cost price, this being a service, I'll also say it's also 1000 Then account, under which account is this new item? So if I click down here, you notice we have, is it income, discount, late fee income, whatever it is, then I can select the description there. In this case, I'll just put a general income. And then the account in which this falls, is it cost of goods sold? If I click on the drop down arrow, you notice we have the repairs and maintenance, salaries and employees, telephone wages, travel and expenses. And we also have others down here. And you can also create a new account. That is if whatever you are dealing with is not part of these ones that are given. So you can just create new. And maybe if I click on create new, I'll be able to add the new account name there in this case i'll just select cost of goods sold and then i can give the description in terms of the sales item maybe let me describe it still at service 77 and then still here i can copy paste this still call it service 77 and you can still give any other description for your item then i'll click on save service 77 and the item has been added. So you now notice if I look at the overview here for service 77, I have sales and purchases and then it's we cost a thousand Kenyan shillings. 
then the description i still gave it a service 77 and i am also able to edit this so for instance because i called this item service 77 and gave it a description as service 77 if i want to change anything i just click on edit and then i'll possibly decide to now call this service video captioning and then under the description now i can possibly give the description one minute long video then the description again i can still give the same that is for the sales information then i can just paste it there so you notice i'm able to edit all this so i can just click on save so with that i now have my video captioning item added here and then the overview you now notice the description has changed to one minute long if now i click on transactions for my video captioning i can also be able to filter this by quotes by invoices by credit notes recurring invoices and all this and then i'm also able to select the status that is if it's a draft sent client viewed accepted and all this under here on the right upper right corner if i click on more i'm able to clone this item i can also make it inactive or if i don't want the item i will click on delete in this case i'll just leave the item as it is and we are going to be using this video captioning item even at the end where we will be invoicing a client for this and uh, the next item we want to look at is banking so if i click on banking i can also be able to connect the bank or credit card but i can also add that manually so if i click on connect bank or credit card you notice i'm able to add any type of account from paypal chase us bank wells fargo and all these others so if i click on one i'll be able to also click on connect and then my account details will be added but i can also add that manually so that's how you will be able to connect your payment method or your banking let's go to the next one that is sales so for sales we can add customers we can add quotes we can add invoices sales receipts payment received or recurring expenses or we can also add credit notes so let's add customers first so i'll click on sales then customers then i click on the plus sign there so it gives me a new customer so in this case now i'm able to add the customer if it's a business i click on business if it is an individual i click on individual in this case i'll use an individual then salutation i choose one let's say mister then the name i say josh and then the last name maybe net then the company name i'll call it joshnet production kenya then customer display name the name that i would want to appear there it gives me a suggestion from my primary contact here so maybe i'll just say mr joshnet that would be the display name then i also put the customer's email here so i'll put the customer's email there then i can add the work phone the mobile their website and all these other details including their currency so in this case if maybe the customer is in a different country i'll change these kenyan shillings to any other currency that i want like you can see we have yuan we have euro we have pound sterling india rupee and all this in this case I'll just assume that my client is also using the same currency. Once I am done with that, I've just remembered, let me change this client's name so that it doesn't look like my own name. Let me just use a different name. In this case, let me call this customer Carol Net. So that we have Miss here. Mrs. Carol Net. So if I'm now satisfied with the details, I can also be able to add their uh, Facebook page, their Twitter link and all that. In this case, I won't add that. I just click on save. So there we have it. Our contact has been added. So this is JoshNet Production KE account. And then we have our customer, Mrs. Carol 
let's send the email address plus all the details down here. So that is how you add a customer. You can add quotes, you can add invoices, you can add receipts. So in this case, let me add an invoice. So to add an invoice, you just click on invoice and then you click on the plus sign. So it gives me the opportunity now to give the customer's name. Now we already added a customer. So if we click here, you notice we have our customer called Joshnet Production KE and we can still add a customer by clicking on this item there. So again, the same way we added a customer, you can add a customer there. So here, let me just select Joshnet Production KE to be my customer. And if I had filled the details for Joshnet KE, the details automatically fills in here. That is the billing address or the shipping address. Then I can give the invoice number. So automatically it has selected this code and I can just use it as it is, but you're also able to change it. Let me maybe call it Josh00123. So Josh00123, order number. So invoice number, your invoice numbers are set on auto-generate mode to save your time. Are you sure about the changing settings? Because of the way I have changed the invoice number here, that's why I'm give, getting this notification. I can click on save so that it will next time auto-generate using this format for Josh so that they are customized to be under my name. Then you can give the order number. Maybe this is the first order. I'll call it 001. Then the invoice date, if I click on that, I'm able to select the date that I'm invoicing. In this case, I just select the current date. Let me close that. And then the due date, I can select either on receipt or I can change this to any other here, net 15, net 45. I'll, it'll just be due on receipt. Then when it is due, let me say after two days. So that will be on 17th. So down here, I can select or add a salesperson. So in this case, I've not added any, so I can just leave it as it is. Then for the subject, I can also now tell them what this invoice is for. Now, if this was for video captioning, I may just say invoice for video captioning. And then we have the items details here. So the type of item, in this case, I can select here. The item we already added, you notice it's already here. I select that item. And once I select that item, automatically it inserts all the details of the item we had added. You notice we had added a video captioning item. We had given it a thousand Kenyan shillings and automatically it has added itself here. The details are here one minute long. So those ones automatically add themselves. Then you can add the customer notes here. Thank you for your business. This is editable. Uh, you can edit it. Then you can enter the terms and conditions of your business to be displayed as a transaction. And another thing you can do here is that you can upload these terms as a file. You notice most of the time you may have it already typed or as a link. If it's a link, you can paste it here, but you can also attach it as a document. So if this client has more than one item, you can also add a new invoice again. So if you're satisfied with this, you will click on save and send. So if I click on save and send, you notice now we have it here. This is our invoice, very professional looking. Dear Joshne Production KE, thank you for your business. Your invoice can be viewed, printed, and downloaded as PDF from the link below. You notice now how our invoice looks, very decent, and you can click uh, the client can click on pay now once they receive it on their end your customer will be able to click on pay now and they'll be able to just do the transaction so fast so so you should also be able to explore all these other options but for time tracking you'll be able to track the time in terms either of the project that you are doing you can track that time so let's look at accounts for accounts 
This is where I said you can be able to adjust your details. So you click on account. For instance, I said you can always adjust your currency. So you are able to do that. You are also able to update your details in bulk. So if I click on currency adjustment, I'm able to adjust the currency adjustments here. And to adjust that, I simply click on make an adjustment. Then I'll be able to change the currency. I hope this has been helpful. And that is how you use Zoho Books. Zoho Books is indeed a powerful accounting software that helps you to do all the invoicing, banking, inventory, just like we have done. Kindly share this video, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.